The old coot here coming at you with another exciting update. So this is the two-day dry-aged ribeye that I'm making. We're now 24 hours later. I just wanted to show everybody what this next step in the process is for doing this two-day dry age, right? And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to tenderize the meat. I want to get rid of some of that excess moisture, right? So you avoid having a watery steak. And basically, if you followed the videos that were before this one, what I did here was, is I took some ribeyes, salted both sides with a little bit of Morton's kosher salt. You can also use Diamond. There's different brands that are out there, but as long as it's some kind of kosher salt, just a little bit, just a little tiny bit is all you need on each side. Laid them out on a cooling baking rack, which is on top of a half sheet. So if you don't have that, you can just use an egg crate, right? Same concept. If you're going to do this process, the most important thing is air. Air is what is your friend in this whole process. And the steaks should be this nice, brightish, reddish color. It's okay if you get a dark spot here and there, no big deal. But what you're looking for is you want to maintain that nice, bright, reddish color. So let's go ahead and flip these. And like I said, if you if you don't have the cooling rack, you can just use, you know, an, an egg crate shell. Actually, let's do that first. So if I grab my tongs and I flip these over, see, you've still got beautiful color, right, for the most part. It almost looks like you're making like a beef jerky, right? Beautiful color. You can see all that nice marbling in there, the ribeye. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this back in the fridge for another 24 hours, right? It's, it's a two-day process. And then tomorrow I'll be ready to make these steaks. So I can fry them. I can put them on a barbecue. I can do whatever I want with them. And if I flip over these guys, let's take this one for instance. So that's that's one side that's dried out. And then now you got this side. And the, the reason why I put them on the cooling rack is to get that air circulating all the way around. Underneath, inside, out, and all that good stuff. And then if I flip this one over, you can see beautiful color, beautiful color, beautiful color throughout. So there you go. So that's basically this now is... 24 hours into the process, I'm going to let these go in the fridge for another 24 hours. And if any of you are curious, my fridge is set to 38 degrees, right? 38 degrees Fahrenheit, in, in case you're curious. And I just put them like on the middle shelf and they were sitting there and they were, they were doing just fine. So anyways, back to the steaks. There are some cool products in the description section down there below. You might want to check those out. There's also a comment section. Go ahead and hit me up in the comment section if you have any comments or questions or whatever. But anyways, I'm looking forward to making these steaks tomorrow. They're going to come out delicious. Just to quickly recap, Morton's or Diamond or whatever kosher salt you want to use on each side of the steak. Just very light. You just need a very small amount. You can see how these steaks came out really, really nice. Put them on a cooling or baking rack on top of a half sheet. And actually, what's kind of cool about this is you can actually lift and see not a whole lot of moisture there's actually no moisture that came out so that tells you that the cooling baking rack and the half sheet were getting enough air circulation in the refrigerator to kind of help this process along but basically it's 24 hours right flip the steaks over there's no need to resalt or anything and then go another 24 hours so two full days 48 hours total then you're ready to cook your steaks what i would do from this point like let's say now it's 24 hours later and it's tomorrow. What I'm going to do is just lightly season them, maybe some pepper. You know, you could put any kind of spice rub you want on at that point and then go ahead and cook them. Frying pan, barbecue, whatever you want to do. And they're good to go. If you're going to do a wet marinade, as I mentioned in a previous video, you can ignore this whole process because you basically just voided everything that you did here. The whole point of doing this was to get some of that excess moisture out of the steaks and using the kosher salt helps to tenderize the meat during this two-day process. So if you're going to use a wet marinade, you're going to soak them in like soy sauce and whatever else you want to put on them. Whole different process, whole different video. We'll have to do that another time. But for now, if you want one of the best, juiciest ribeye steaks you've ever had, this is the technique that I use. Seems to work for me. Like I said, if you don't want to go the extra mile and get yourself a half sheet or maybe you don't have enough room in your fridge or whatever and you don't have room for a cooling rack you can always do a quarter right like i'll try to put some links down below in the description for some quarter size pans and some quarter size uh cooling baking racks and all that or like i said you could just go the cheapy way and just use an egg crate see so just simple simple old egg crate anyways hit that like button hit the subscribe button down there below and i'll catch you on the next exciting video